Every year, we try to incorporate new projects to dramatically change the quality of habitat we have on our farm for our wildlife. A couple of years ago, that project was to create a small hunting plot in the middle of a heavily wooded area in one of our prime hunting locations. This project has turned into what we call now the plantation plot. As a deer manager, creating habitat for wildlife is one of the most rewarding things you can do. In previous episodes, we went over things like what to do prior to planning, annual versus perennial plots, and even breaking down a brand new property. But in this episode, we will come full circle and apply all of those concepts to create a successful food plot from scratch. Welcome back to another episode of The Off Season. In this episode, we will be taking you guys through the entire process that it takes to turn a patch of woods into a hunting plot. And although we are doing this on a large scale, these same practices can be utilized to work on any size food plot you wish to create. But no matter the size, you want to make sure that you take plenty of time to come up with a plan. So to start off, we spent a considerable amount of time studying aerial maps of the land, as well as topographical maps, to give us an idea of where we wanted to put this food plot. And after coming up with a solid game plan, it's time for us to head out, put boots on the ground, to finalize this plan. Well, it's March 13th here in the Bearded Buck Farm, and we're much closer to our turkey season than we are deer season. But we're constantly working on our habitat, and we've been working on this property for the last 18, 19 years, and we just acquired an additional piece of property that hasn't had any work done to it, and it's adjacent to this piece of property. So we're heading out today to lay out a plan for a food plot that I want to put in there. I've studied the property with the maps already, various different map apps on the phone, back on the computer, we had some aerial footage of the property. I've looked at it, I've looked where the deer should be bedding, where they want to go to feed, where they have water, where we can put a sanctuary, and where we can put this food plot. So. We're gonna head out there now. We have some guys behind us gonna help me run the dozer and help us mark it out. And we're gonna decide where to put this plot and how big it should be. So John, the food plot we wanna put in is probably another 200 yards or so past the end of this old dam. But when we're done with that food plot, I'd like to come back in here and work with you and see if we can't get this dam repaired to hold water again. I think the breast of it just busted out. They took the pipe out, the pipe out. and just gutted it out. I think if we repair the breast of that dam and then widen a little bit here, we can get a stockable pond there. Let alone a water hole for the deer, we can stock it and be really good for it. You can see where these, these jack pines are down here at the end. That's about where I want to put this plot, but the access to it's going to be right here. So create the access, probably an extra 10 yards wide on each side, and we'll feed this. It'll be like a sendero coming down to this plot. We're going to, primarily going to bow hunt this plot, but to rifle hunt this, if we have some guys in, We'll put an elevated stand up down here at the, the, the bend in that road, and we're gonna be able to see all of this and down the other way and then into the plot itself. Okay. So basically what we do, anytime we're going in to try and put a new plot in, before we waste our time cutting trees or bringing the dozer in, is we'll come in with a pick and a shovel and we'll just get a little sample of the soil here to make sure we're not in a straight rock bed, but we have soil that we don't think will seed. And this looks really good, it's a little frozen yet, but we have good soil, we got some clay underneath it. So if we get into the pines and we have similar soil as this, we're gonna be golden over here. We're gonna walk this right now, we'll take that pick and shovel with us. Let's walk these pines and we'll check the soil throughout it. Then right up through here, this flat's where I picture that, that uh, food plot because see how we got a little bit of crown already here? That's gonna keep it dry. We'll just take this back, not quite to the base of the hill. These deer are bedding across the top of this ridge right up here, and in the winter they're using some of these pines, but these pines go the whole length of this bench from both sides. So by taking out this one acre spot here, isn't gonna screw anything up with their bedding. So after getting everything laid out and some trees marked, we are finally ready to start the fun part. When we first started clearing out the trees, we went in there with chainsaws. We did it this way because this section of the property is deep in the middle of nowhere, and getting a dozer out there wouldn't be worth it for the size of the plot we were planning on putting in. So we quickly got to work cutting down the trees and burning the wood.
After a couple of days of cutting and burning, we decided to expand this plot from a small one acre kill plot to a large four and a half acre destination food plot. We came to this decision after determining there wasn't a ton of forage in this area and that the deer needed a more substantial form of nutrition. This time, however, we decided it was worth bringing out the big machinery to get the job done. And rather than burning the tree fall, we push it to the edges of the food plot to create pinch points and funnels for the deer to enter the field to make it easier for us to hunt a larger food plot. Once we finally got all the land cleared of the trees, it was time to do some soil testing. After we got the results back, we determined that we needed to add a significant amount of lime to get the pH levels to where we need them to be. After we brought the lime truck in to help give the soil a boost, it was finally time to break out the disc and start turning some dirt. One problem that we ran into was that the majority of our property is reclaimed strip ground, so we had a ton of large rocks come to the surface. So when we went back in to plant and fertilize, we knew we had our work cut out for us to maximize the field potential. All right, get in there. So we're out here today. Denny's on the tractor. We're trying to get this thing seeded. We're getting some clover with some oats and some wheat on top of it. So we get something established quick in here, throwing the fertilizer to it. We're, we're going between two and 400 pounds per acre because of the soil that we have out here. Ought to get us a good start based on our soil samples. Notice we have the younger guy doing the lifting and the older, wiser guy doing the cutting. It seems to work out better that way. I paid my dues over the years, buddy. That's fine. Huh? That's fine. I didn't go to the gym this morning, so <laughs> I'll pick rocks. You can drive the tractor. All right. He says I can drive the tractor and he'll pick rocks. Well, I'm not going to argue with that. So, what's to do? Let's keep moving. So while I followed Dad and went around picking rocks as he spread fertilizer, Denny planted seed. We eventually got it done, and there's nothing left to do but sit back and watch this field flourish. Fast forward a few months, and this field is now a deer haven. All of the hard work that we put into this field over the summer looks like it's paying off substantially. We took this small patch of woods and turned it into something truly special. And over the next couple of years, we were able to use this field quite successfully for both deer and turkey hunting. We've had numerous guests come in to shoot a bunch of does off this field, including myself and dad. You know, in fact, the same year we put this field in back in 2019, dad actually hunted a buck named Milton that became a regular in this field. Unfortunately, however, dad was never able to seal the deal on Milton. Since then though, we had numerous bucks call this field home every deer season, and it's always loaded with a healthy herd of deer. Like I said in the beginning of this, creating habitat for wildlife is one of the most rewarding things you can do as a hunter and landowner. And with some hard work and a lot of time, you can turn your property into a deer magnet. Now, while that's all for this episode, I hope you guys were able to take away some useful knowledge from this episode and apply it to your property. You know, like we always say, it's not the only way or necessarily the best way, but it is what has worked for us for so many years. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode of The Off Season.